Turning now to tonight's top stories, Roger Stone, a longtime political strategist and friend of President Donald Trump, sentenced to 40 months in prison. Stone was convicted last fall of lying to Congress and threatening a witness regarding his efforts for the president's 2016 campaign. The Justice Department had initially recommended Stone receive at least seven years in prison. President Trump called that a miscarriage of justice. Attorney General William Barr later backed off that recommendation, prompting four prosecutors to quit Stone's case. The U.S. economy may be doing well, but not everyone is feeling the benefits. The Economic Policy Institute reports the median increase in 2019 paychecks was slower than expected at just 1 percent. But earners at the top of the income ladder received the largest increase, 4.5 percent. Economists have struggled to explain the sluggish wage growth for the average and low earners. Scientists at an ocean sciences conference in San Diego this week gave a grim warning about the Earth's coral reefs. They say climate change could kill all the coral reefs by the year 2100. Scientists say warmer oceans, acidic waters and pollution are expected to destroy up to 90 percent of all existing coral reefs in the next 20 years. The health and condition of those environments is expected to get worse. If you've been to the movies in San Antonio, then chances are you have been inside a Santicos theater. The theater chain is still evolving after a century of entertainment in our area. In this week's Throwback Thursday, RJ Marquez tells us about the Santicos family and their legacy of showing South Texas more than just movies. You see the name on theaters across the Alamo City. Santicos is synonymous with movies and family entertainment. Its origins go back to 1911 when Luis Santicos founded the company and soon opened his first theater. One of the first theaters was a silent movie theater opened in the 20s. Santicos opened the Palace Theater in 1923 and expanded to drive-ins including the Mission and San Pedro locations in the 1940s. His son, John Santicos, took over the company and took it to new heights, building the largest family-owned theater circuit in Texas. The oldest theater that we have today that was a Santicos original theater opened up in the mid-70s, 1975, and that would be the Northwest. The popular Galaxy, Embassy, and Bijou theaters all followed. Santicos was a visionary and wanted moviegoers to get the best experience possible. He then built modern day movie palaces such as the Silverado and Palladium. He had a penchant for um, looking at innovative technologies as they came out. You know, the only IMAX in town for a long time was his. Uh, I think he was progressive in that regard. Santicos also donated to several charities, programs for children, and fell in love with the local art scene. Four years before he died in 2014, he started to think about and later decided to donate the bulk of his estate to the San Antonio Area Foundation. He was a very philanthropic guy when he was alive. A lot of this community knows that. He cared about the arts, he cared about kids. And, and what he left in his will is these areas of interest that as that money is plowed back into the San Antonio community, he said, I want to go into these areas that you really care deeply about. Today, profits from every purchase made at a Santicos location goes directly back to local nonprofits. The Area Foundation gives to those in need, from the arts to culture to city parks and medical research. With nine theaters across San Antonio, the expansion is not expected to end anytime soon. The company recently announced two new locations. Each one of the theaters has its own character. Uh, it's in a different part of the, of the community, and each one represents the community where it sits. But the goal remains the same, to give back to the community that embraced John Santico's vision. And it's all for the benefit of this community. In a way, this is San Antonio's theater chain, and it's wonderful to work at a company where the mission is clear and you're doing something that is meaningful. For The Nine, R.J. Marcus. Throwback Thursday is just one of the series we feature here on KSAT News at 9. Here's a look at some of the others that we have. Tune in tomorrow night for a look back at the week's biggest local stories in the week in 210. Get ready for some great music, a trip down to New Orleans, and a special visit from some friendly friends for this weekend's picks. I'm Alicia Barrera. Let's kick things off on Saturday. Mardi Gras all day. The Arneson River Theater will host live bands, food trucks, and entertainment. It all starts at 1 p.m. and goes on till 9 at night. And to make sure you're in the Mardi Gras spirit, don't miss the River Parade from 4 to 6 along the Riverwalk. Come dress in masks, costumes, and of course, beads for the free celebration. 
And it's the last weekend for the stock show in Rodeo. So in things on a high note with some great music. The first concert is this guy named Brad. Have you ever heard of him? Brad Paisley is taking the AT&T Center on Friday, followed by Whiskey Myers on Saturday. And KC and the Sunshine Band will close out the weekend on Sunday. Tickets are still available for all shows and on Sunday, February 23rd, get into the fairgrounds for free with the Family Day Fairgrounds Admissions Pass on the San Antonio Rodeo app. It's a beautiful day in the neighborhood, won't you be my friend? This is perfect for all toddlers and it's happening at the Tobin Center. Daniel Tiger's Neighborhood Live is coming to town this Sunday. Daniel Tiger, Oh the Owl, Katarina Kitty Cat, Prince Wednesday, and all of his friends from the PBS Kids television series will be on stage for the new Neighbor Day show. Tickets start at $25 and the show kicks off at 1 p.m. And for more on these events and everything happening around town this weekend, you can head over to KSAT.com. For the Nine, I'm Alicia Barrera, KSAT 12 News. Speaking of Mardi Gras, here's your weekend picks forecast for Saturday. If you want to head down to the Riverwalk, very pleasant weather, much nicer than what we've seen the past couple of days. A mix of sun and clouds. Afternoon high temperatures on Saturday will be in the low 60s. Humidity will still be low Saturday, but winds will begin to shift around to the south southeast at 5 to 10 miles per hour. So Saturday, low 60s Sunday, another warm day pushing 70 and then we'll climb into the 70s Monday and Tuesday before another cold front rolls in. So we've got two cold fronts in the planning forecast. First one here, you know, as we actually get a little bit warmer behind that front Sunday into to Monday that'll help to drop humidity. It's the second front that will start to usher in some cooler air for us uh, by the middle part of next week. But despite two cold fronts in the forecast, these fronts are not going to bring us much rain at all. In fact, over the next week, uh, we're looking at maybe around a tenth of an inch of rain. Our rain chances are really slim, just a 20% chance of a shower late Sunday night, very early Monday with that first cold front. Second cold front looks like a strictly dry cold front for us here, but it will take us from the low 70s down into the low 60s by the middle of next week. Time now to go to KSAT.com to find out what is trending today with Ferris Sabawi. Well, Myra, a ton of fun stories as usual on KSAT.com. Now, we've been talking about Selena for a while. I know we got a big celebration coming up. Oh, yeah. We actually also have a KSAT special that we're working on pretty soon mm -hmm. uh, as well, uh, you know, honoring her legacy. So I think it's only right that we talk a little bit about this. Today, Stripes released two cups that they will be selling uh, pretty soon here at the end of the month, um, honoring Selena's legacy. They have two designs here. Uh, and they worked with the family to establish these designs. So you got uh, really different looks in these two. Uh, I'm a bigger fan of this one right here with the purple lid. I think I'm with you. On yeah, those two. Yeah. I think I think the the glitter really does it for me. I don't know. I don't it know. It always does it for me, but I'm glad to know it does it for you too. Hey, it gets it. It gets the job One done. One thing to bring us together. Absolutely, and we need that in today's world. Definitely. Um, I know fans will be pretty excited about this. Now, this will be on sale at Stripe Store starting February 29th. Okay. Uh, people can line up starting at 8 a.m. and I bet you they will. Be. And there's a ton of options out there right now for this big anniversary coming up. Oh yeah. A lot of different businesses are celebrating her. They've got merchandise to go along with it. So one more for you. It's pretty incredible. Yeah, add that to the list. Yeah, uh, exactly. There's no shortage of them. That's for sure. Uh, Myra, now today is National Love Your Pet Day and uh, sort of in that same vein, a lot of people have been clicking into this story that we posted today on KSAD.com about how we we may have been calculating dog years all wrong. No. Yeah. So this, what have we been doing? So the standard rule of thumb is that you multiply your dog's age by seven. That was right. always sort of the standard dog year. So if your dog was seven, you're you know you'd think your dog is 49. Um, well, Science Mag uh, researched dog genetics and came up with a new equation uh, to more accurately capture the dog's age. Okay. Now, do you have a pen and paper? Because you might need one. Okay. Um, you need I'm a. Ready. You need the natural logarithm, okay? I know okay, high school, it's high school kids. math class. I, I it's know, it's insane. It. I'm doing. sorry, Myra, <laughs> I'm sorry. You need uh, the natural logarithm uh, of your dog's uh, actual age and year. So if your dog's seven, you take the natural logarithm of seven. Okay. You multiply that by 16 and then you add 31. Now, I don't exactly know how the science okay. comes into this, but they're saying it's more scientifically based. All right. so, so if a dog is seven with this new formula, the dog is actually closer to 60 years old. Oh, in doggy years. okay. So, uh, um, you know, information you can use. Yeah, yeah. You, you know, your dog has been offended that you've been getting its age wrong this whole time. Yeah. So 
go home, apologize to your dog, and then, uh, you know, celebrate the right birthday. Ageism, it's not cool. It's not cool. It is not cool. It's not cool. Thank you for this new <laughs> formula. Now we know what we're doing. Uh, last story of the day, Myra. A lot of people, uh, you know, especially in Texas, they kind of hate feral hogs. Uh, yeah. Just a nuisance, overpopulated. Um, and there were some wildlife removal experts uh, in Trinity River, uh, northeast of Houston. And get this, they hunted down a 488 pound hog. And these things can do some serious damage. So I can only imagine what a 488 pound yeah. hog could do. If you see that barreling your way, I mean, it's best to just jump out <laughs> the way. I don't yeah. know what I would do if I saw one uh, live coming at me. Uh, I know wow. I, I would have probably hidden. Now these guys are uh, wildlife removal experts. Uh, they're really good at what they do. They use thermal scopes to, um, to, to stake out this hog. And uh, actually it was the third hog they killed that night. They had killed two others, both around 250 pounds. Oh so it was goodness. a busy night for them. Yeah, uh, I don't know small if small compared to this guy. Yeah, absolutely. I don't know if feral hog meat is good, but I guess they got a lot on their hands. Uh, I would say so. What uh, you do with that, I yeah, don't know. Yeah, I'm not sure. Well, Somebody it, out there can tell us. <laughs> yeah, we might need to ask Chef Tattoo about that <laughs> one. He might have a good answer there. Uh, so those are those are our stories. A lot of fun stuff and a lot more at KSAT.com. All right, thanks, Ferris. Yeah. We'll be right back. That does it for this edition of KSAT News at 9. Thanks so much for being with us tonight. I'm Myra Arthur. We'll see you right back here tomorrow. Good night.